The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group has transited the Straits of Gibraltar and is racing to join the USS Gerald R. Ford CSG in the Eastern Mediterranean. When it arrives, the US and the NATO will have assembled a fleet of no fewer than 73 ships, including more than 30 NATO ships taking part in the dynamic mariner exercises off the coast of Italy. This is, I believe, the largest U.S. and NATO assemblage of warships in at least the past half century. In addition to the many support ships, the following major warships are present. Two U.S. supercarriers, Ford and Eisenhower. Two VTL aircraft carriers, USS Bataan and its Cavour. Two guided missile cruisers, 11 guided missile destroyers, several frigates. There are also undoubtedly a large number of submarines present, each one of which packs substantial standoff firepower. I will once again emphasize that this fleet is not being assembled in order to assist the Israelis in their ongoing project to destroy Hamas and the 2.5 million inhabitants of Gaza. In my view, this powerful fleet can have only one possible mission, to eradicate all Russian, Iranian, and Iranian-affiliated military power currently present in Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. Needless to say, these are extremely portentous developments that entail great risk of plunging the world into the biggest and most destructive war in human history. And in a remarkable display of international maritime cooperation, naval forces from five allied nations have gathered in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Italy for the start of exercise Dynamic Mariner 23. Following a year of meticulous planning, NATO's Italian-led exercise will put personnel and military assets through a series of challenging scenarios designed to prepare them for an effective response to potential crises and threats in the future. Led by NATO Allied Maritime Command, MARCOM, the exercise is vital training for the Italian Navy as it prepares to take over the NATO Response Force maritime element from Turkey in 2024. The NATO Response Force is a highly ready and technologically advanced multinational force that comprises land, air, maritime and special operations force components, which the Alliance can deploy quickly whenever and wherever needed. Participants in Exercise Dynamic Mariner will engage in a wide range of training activities, including anti-submarine warfare, anti-air warfare, amphibious operations, mine countermeasures, boarding exercises, choke point transit, and critical undersea infrastructure protection operations. Capabilities will be tested across multiple domains, air, land, and sea, as well as the asymmetric battle space, including cyber warfare. The exercise will feature a diverse range of naval assets, approximately 30 warships, including an Italian aircraft carrier, submarines, helicopters, and aircraft, including Harriers, and F-35B Lightning II Joint Strike Fighters, as well as more than 6,000 troops, staff officers and observers from a total of 14 allied nations – Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Spain, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Dynamic Mariner is one of the most important exercises in the maritime domain, said Marcom Deputy Chief of Staff Operations, German Navy Rear Admiral Stefan Pauli. It not only enhances maritime cooperation between the many nations taking part, it also improves readiness, so are prepared to deter aggression and defend the alliance. The exercise will take place in Italian territorial waters and international waters in the Mediterranean Sea, including airspace above, an extremely important area for global maritime security. The exercise also involves Standing NATO Mine Countermeasures Group 2, one of NATO's standing naval forces on active duty that contribute to the Alliance's collective defense on a permanent basis. Exercise Dynamic Mariner 23 has begun on the 23rd of October and will finish on the 6th of November. It overlaps with the Italian-led Exercise Mare Aperto 23, 2, which continues until the 17th of November. Collective defense remains the Alliance's greatest responsibility, and deterrence is a core element of NATO's overall strategy preventing conflict and war, protecting allies, maintaining freedom of decision and action, and upholding the principles and values it stands for. Headquartered in Northwood, United Kingdom, NATO. Allied Maritime Commandees, the central command of all NATO maritime forces. MARCOM's commander is the primary maritime advisor to the Alliance. Like its land and air counterparts, LANDCOM and AIRCOM, MARCOM reports to NATO's allied command operations, which is located in Mons, Belgium. 
The U.S. has intelligence that Iranian-backed militia groups are planning to ramp up attacks against U.S. forces in the Middle East, as Iran seeks to capitalize on the backlash in the region to U.S. support for Israel, according to multiple U.S. officials. The militia groups have already launched multiple drone attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. But the U.S. now has specific intelligence that those same groups could escalate even further as the war between Israel and Hamas continues. There are red lights flashing everywhere, a U.S. official in the region said. Officials said that at this point, Iran appears to be encouraging the groups rather than explicitly directing them. One official said Iran is providing guidance to the militia groups that they will not be punished by not getting resupplied with weaponry, for example, if they continue to attack U.S. or Israeli targets. On Monday, National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said there is a very direct connection between these groups and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, and he said the U.S. is deeply concerned about the potential of any significant escalation of these attacks in the days ahead. We see a prospect for much more significant escalation against U.S. forces and personnel in the near term the official said. And let's be clear about it. The road leads back to Iran. Iran funds, arms, equips and trains militias and proxy forces all across the region. We are preparing for this escalation, both in terms of defending our forces and being prepared to respond decisively. Iran supports a number of proxy militia groups in countries across the region through the IRGC Quds Force, and Tehran does not always exert perfect command and control over these groups. How willing those groups are to act independently is a persistent intelligence gap, noted one source. But, Kirby said, we know that Iran is closely monitoring these events and in some cases actively facilitating attacks and spurring on others who may want to exploit the conflict for their own good, he said. Iran's goal is to maintain some plausible deniability here, but we are not going to allow them to do that. A senior State Department official separately said that the U.S. and its partners are all on the same page that sending a clear message to Iran that it should not seek to take advantage of the situation and groups that are under its control or influence should not seek to take advantage of this either. And if Tehran does so, that could have very escalatory and dire consequences. It's not just a U.S. message, it's a shared message, the official said. In the case of the recent drone attacks on bases housing U.S. forces, Iran is certainly more culpable than in the case of the Hamas attack in Israel, said another person familiar with the intelligence. Iranian proxy forces have attacked bases housing U.S. troops in the past, and the U.S. has responded with airstrikes against the group's infrastructure, including as recently as March. But another source said that right now, the Iranians' appetite for expanding the conflict is high. Their risk tolerance is high. The U.S., meanwhile, is actively bolstering its defenses in light of the heightened threats. The U.S. has around 2,500 troops in Iraq and around 900 in Syria as part of the anti-ISIS coalition. And Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said in a statement over the weekend that he was deploying additional air defense systems to the region in response to recent escalations by Iran and its proxy forces across the Middle East. Those include a terminal high-altitude area defense missile system and additional Patriot batteries. Two drones targeting U.S. forces in Syria were shot down on Monday, and troops in Iraq and Syria faced three separate drone attacks last week from suspected Iranian proxy groups, the Pentagon confirmed. Last Thursday, a U.S. Navy warship operating off the coast of Yemen intercepted multiple missiles fired by Iranian-backed Houthi militants that appeared to be heading toward Israel. In Tehran, there does not appear to be a clear consensus about what approach to take to the war between Israel and Hamas. I am sure there are different voices in their system advocating different things, the senior State Department official said. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warhawk Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members-only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description.